welcome back to my channel. It has been a long time. How about something drastic happened just um, two days ago now that I felt like I really should address and talk about. It is something that I have been looking into and following for a long time and it's also something that's going to be causing a lot of people a lot of stress. You probably already heard about it. OnlyFans made a massive announcement on Friday morning for us in Australia. I'm going to guess it was Thursday evening for most people. But um, yeah, OnlyFans made an announcement that come October, they are no longer going to be hosting sexually explicit content. And the internet had a field day. Obviously, there were going to be a lot of not very nice responses and there were a lot of people who had the same running joke that of course Nicole Arba also posted about you know oh wow yay at least all those OnlyFans girls will go back to being servers which I'm going to take a little break from the main part of the story because I just really want to address this post I mean it's not just Nicole Arba I mean look another person that was under the CNN post. To me, the most disturbing thing about that reaction, even more so than just the general misogynistic responses about, you know, oh, now they'll have to get a real job because obviously something that supported you for years and years wasn't a real job. But with the joking about, oh, now restaurants will finally have service again. The reason why restaurants are struggling right now is because it is, in short, a fairly terrible job that is underpaid, underappreciated, and it's generally seen by people as being a kind of good thing that, you know, people are starting to stand up for themselves. They're demanding living wages. They're demanding basic humanity, essentially. And people are responding to the OnlyFans thing as, oh, well, all those OnlyFans thoughts will just go be service now. And the bit that disturbs me the most on this is it implicitly implies that sexualization is inherently bad unless it's for a real job where you are being exploited by a company or an employer. Because if you are getting sexually harassed or sexually exploited, which we know runs rampant in the service industry, like, that's one of the issues they're struggling to find workers right now. It's not a very nice industry. But they're implicitly implying that, oh, well, sexualizing yourself on OnlyFans is bad. All you have to offer in the world is your body. You might as well be a server working for $2 an hour and just putting up with endless harassment and even actual sexual assault because groping people, touching them without consent is assault. That's fine. That's totally fine because you're doing it for a boss. You're doing it for a company. So, you know, that exploitation is fine. But if you exploit yourself by posting sexy content at home from the safety of your room on OnlyFans, that's bad. And, like, mm, I'm not going to go too much into it because it is something that I could easily rant about for a long, long time. And if I don't go into the post that I want to talk about, this video will risk being like an hour long and nobody wants that. So to keep it longer, I'm just not going to go into that entire bombshell too in depth other than that is a terrible attitude. And if you felt that way or laugh about that joke, I really, really hope you start reflecting on it and reflecting on yourself and just wondering like, what makes that funny? What is the punchline? What is so amusing about that? Is it the fact that servers are known to be constantly harassed and putting up with it is expected to be a part of their job for their tips? Or like, is there another part of the punchline that I'm missing? But anyway, let's go to the OnlyFans thing. Now, I actually have a very popular post on Twitter about this because I started a thread on Friday about how I personally don't think we need, can focus all of the blame on OnlyFans because there are underlying 
culprits essentially there are bad guys under this whole thing that are involved and it goes into essentially like religious groups attacking it and banking institutions and only fans essentially being stuck between a rock and a hard place and they took the easy way out i mean it's not great but the blame isn't 100% on them. They are not the only source culpable for this. And they're also not going to be the only site affected by this, which I feel like gets ignored when we focus all our attention just on blaming OnlyFans. But to get into the actual story, on Friday morning for me, probably Thursday night for you guys, but two days ago, OnlyFans sent out a public relations notice, a first to Bloomberg, that essentially stated that all sexually explicit content would no longer be involved in OnlyFans. Now, this wasn't actually a surprise. Most people were expecting it. We were kind of prepared for it. It wasn't so much if it was happening, but when it was happening. But the way it happened sucks. One, they didn't tell their creators at all. They sent off a PR notice for publications and Bloomberg, and it was in the news media. So like the people watching news and reading news heard about it before their own content creators did. Then, then on top of that, when people started hearing the news and freaking out, so they contacted OnlyFans directly uh, through OnlyFans support, because that's the fastest way to get a response through their Twitter. OnlyFans workers also seemingly were not aware because the staff that were working the OnlyFans support desk were telling everyone, no, 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 they're talking about OnlyFans TV because OnlyFans is launching a new app in October, which is connected to the OnlyFans TV, which is generally seen as being safe for work. More on that later. It's only safe for work on the surface, but lots and lots of nude, nude PPVs in the DMs. That's going to be later. I'll probably just do a few videos on this. So this isn't going to be, again, an hour long. But yeah, they say that they were releasing the app. And because of the rules with Apple, especially, and even Google, like it has to be safe for work, can't have any nudity. So the OnlyFans support staff were also in the dark about it. Creators were in the dark about it. But because the staff were in the dark about it, the OnlyFans creators who were understandably freaking out, thinking that they had just lost their platform. And you know, we are still living in the middle of a pandemic. So this is like primary source of income for millions of people right now. Okay, maybe not millions, but at least, you know, hundreds of thousands. There are a lot of people using OnlyFans right now. But they were being told that no, no, none of that's true. Do not listen to rumors. That's not happening. It's not that they're talking about something completely different. Like total, total gaslighting of their own creators only to officially send an email later that night. Like I said, for me, it happened on Friday morning. The email came at nighttime to be like, oh, yeah, all those changes you heard that we just spent the whole day telling you wasn't happening. Do you know what that is happening? So yeah, we are actually kicking off all the sexually explicit content. We were just telling you it wasn't happening despite having official notices out that it was happening. And yeah, that is how they treated their creators. And then today, today on Twitter, OnlyFans finally posted something in their entire history of being on Twitter. They have never acknowledged sex workers. They went out of their ways to not acknowledge any adult content or any adult creation. They were essentially trying to like hide from it and wanted to not be associated with adult content, despite the fact that, you know, generally the public associates OnlyFans with sexy fun. But they spent years trying to basically hide from that image and denying it. They did shout outs for celebrities and fitness gurus, makeup legends, YouTubers, Instagram influencers. Like they brought them on. They offered to pay them six figures to go onto the site. Here is a little proof from Mali, Glock and Barbie, who, is, who turned down their offer. But yeah, they were being... OnlyFans actually invited other influencers onto the platform. They did it literally a shout out for magicians. I didn't pull that out of nowhere. There was like this big post where they were going, ooh, check out magicians on OnlyFans. 
And they went out of the way to essentially avoid ever talking about sex workers. They would not promote any sex worker accounts. They would barely register or recognize that they existed. They did reply to you occasionally on Twitter, but they did generally just try to stay away from all that and like hide it and not be associated. And today they posted, Dear sex workers, the OnlyFans community would not be what it is today without you. The policy change was necessary to secure banking and payment services to support you. We are working around the clock to come up with solutions. Hashtag sex work is work. It is the first time, first time ever. OnlyFans has been around since 2017. This is the first time they've ever mentioned a post directed at sex workers, acknowledged sex workers on their accounts, anything. And it comes two days after they booted them off the account with zero notice. And after a whole day of gaslighting them saying, no, 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 that's not happening, sweetie. It's not happening. Keep using the site. So yeah, that wasn't a great way to address the whole issue, scenario, event, catastrophe, whatever word you want to use it by OnlyFans. Like, that's a shitty way to announce it to people. And obviously there are tons and tons of comments that are calling them out on this, on how they never actually supported or recognized or registered the sex, works, the sex workers who helped build up OnlyFans, who created it, what it is today, how they've been routinely ignored and dismissed. And now, Sex workers work. Mm. But as I mentioned before, and as OnlyFans mentioned, they're doing it to basically comply with the banking financial institutions. That is a whole history behind it. On um, Friday morning, once the news was announced, one of my best friends who is completely not related to anything adult. She saw the news and she sent me this gift, so I'm just gonna include that because it's a Simpsons gift and it's funny, but you know, ah, our product was popular before, so let's remove the thing that made it popular and I'm sure it'll be even more popular than ever before. 30 minutes later. Like, that might be happening, but to be utterly honest, I actually don't think OnlyFans is going to totally disappear and fail after this. I mean, it would be kind of like poetic justice if they did, but because they have spent so many years essentially ignoring sex workers and screwing them over and trying to get a lot of like celebrities and influencers onto the site, they do have OnlyFans TV coming out, which is kind of more interactive than YouTube. So I don't think OnlyFans is actually gonna crash and burn after this. I. Don't think it's going to be as huge as it is now. I mean, sex is what made them a multi-billion dollar company and they just got rid of the biggest cash cows on their site. But I don't think it's going to be enough for them to completely disappear like Tumblr did when Tumblr decided to ban all not safe for work content too. But like OnlyFans mentioned, they did it to comply with the new banking requirement. And that is actually a thing that is happening. And I'm just going to mention it a little bit quickly because I don't want it to take too long. Again, I'm just going to make multiple different videos so I can discuss all the little parts of it more in depth. So if you want to hear more, you know, subscribe and I will be posting more videos talking about this. But because it is quite messy and deep and it's something that's been happening slowly, technically over like two decades, like it's not a sudden thing. It would just take too long. I'm just going to touch on everything rather briefly in this video now. So you might have remembered how last year Pornhub essentially lost like 75% of its content on its videos. Mastercard and Visa kind of dropped it and it was like this big scandal where Pornhub got attacked and it was because of supposed instances of child sexual abusive material, CSA, and, and human trafficking cases. Now Pornhub did have many issues, issues that sex workers themselves would call out constantly for years and years. I mean, it facilitated piracy of videos and stuff. There were many reasons sex workers did not like Pornhub. So this kind of part is a little bit, but essentially there was a company that an organization called Trafficking Hub that started attacking Pornhub 
for at least a year. They raised a lot of money and funding. So they have quite a lot of influence and power behind them. And this company is connected to Exodus Cry. And also NCOSE, the National Center of Exploita Sexual Exploitation. Fun fact! The National Center of Sexual Expectation, NCOSE, they have existed since 1960. But before this, they were called Morality in Media. However, they decided to rebrand after the 2000s, not all that long ago, because they realized morality in media and how they're really pushing like the anti-abortion, anti-LGBTQIA, anti-safe sex education wasn't really going down well with people like they weren't getting a huge amount of public support so they essentially rebranded claimed they were cared about social justice issues started focusing on human trafficking and child sexual exploitive material and suddenly they were getting popular and now they are the national center of sexual exploitation because you know that sounds better for the general public than morality in media which kind of really highlights their puritanical conservative religious roots but yeah, these three companies um uh, exodus cry trafficking hub and cose they're all connected and they have been working relentlessly to attack pornhub first one day after pornhub lost its banking financial support they immediately turned to only fans and now this has happened with OnlyFans, which is supposedly connected to MasterCard's rules changes and having to put in a whole heap of rather unreasonable demands for any large site with like constantly monitoring every single upload and live stream in real time to make sure everything is completely on board and comply. Everyone having constant documents and proof of allowing to like distribute the videos for every single item and post that they have. No longer just like tagging another OnlyFans creator. You have to have all the paperwork on you. Like it's a lot of stuff and I can see why a company that does have as many people as OnlyFans did would feel like it's overwhelming, it's going to be very, very expensive, it's not worth the effort, so they'd rather drop it. Still kind of a jerk thing to do, but like I can get that thought process. But one day after OnlyFans had all the changes, Layla Mikowait, the co-director of Abolition or whatever from Trafficking Hub and Exodus Cry and a one of the main parties behind this turned her attention onto Twitter. So Twitter is next. So yeah, and uh, they did Pornhub immediately one day later, turned to OnlyFans. And now one day later after OnlyFans turning to Twitter, which is actually possible now because with the super followers that are coming on Twitter, they're going to bring in banking institutions, which means that once again, they might be able to essentially get like corporate blackmail against banking institutions and fall in line and just all that. But the main part behind Exodus Cry, Trafficking Hub, and NCOSC is essentially they want to abolish the sex industry altogether. This includes porn, this includes full service sex work, this includes camming, this includes stripping, like anything that's connected to sex work, they want it to be abolished entirely under criminal law. To the extent where you know how you hear stories about human trafficking rings and how strangely enough fairly often like in this example from ohio this year in january where trafficking rings bust they, where raids bust up a trafficking ring and the poor trafficked victims get arrested and thrown into jail because that's how you treat victims right Victims that are full of trauma and abuse, let's arrest them and throw them into prison because apparently that helps. That is the thing with these groups, as can be hugely described by this. Leila Mikowait, again, the abolition director behind Trafficking Hub, behind Exodus Cry, she was a former in hoc KP, the International House of Prayer member and everything. She literally, and I mean literally, posted child sexual abuse material onto her Twitter 
yesterday. So this is a person who claims that she is all about rescuing people. She wants to rescue victims of the industry. She wants to abolish it because there's just so many victims and children and people being exploited. And all she cares about is helping the poor exploited people unless they, you know, don't fall in line with her agenda because she just blocks anyone who disagrees with her, including trafficking victims who speak out against her because people do bring up the fact that abolition and throwing things underground actually makes it harder to find trafficking victims. If you push it underground, sure, it's out of sight, but that also means like police and stuff have a harder job saving and rescuing people. So it's not exactly the best strategy, maybe, but this person who claims to care posted a video of child sexual abuse, well, physical abuse, it cut out before the sexual part, but posted a video of a child being physically abused, violently abused. Onto her Twitter, it was on autoplay, there was zero warning, it did cut off before any of the sexual stuff, but it was an obvious video of abuse. And had that up on her Twitter, which is shocking enough. But the other bits that are shocking is that video was, um, it was screen recorded. It was a screen recording that she had, that she shared. That video had been taken off Pornhub years ago. It has literally been removed years ago. People who were trying to find the original source could not find it. It got reported and it got removed a long time ago. And she's putting all the stuff about her and Eliza Blue about, you know, protecting victims by taking their content off the internet. So here is a child who got abused. Her content was successfully removed from the internet. And yet, Layla had this video on her computer for who knows what reason and decided to share it again on Twitter to her followers. She has like 50,000 followers. <sighs> How is that not monstrous? And not only that, all the people who follow her, a lot of them are connected to actual trafficking themselves. They are victims. The trigger, it, it is a massive, massive trigger, like the trauma this could bring up. And if that doesn't illustrate perfectly how victims are nothing more than a pawn for her, these are, they are props. They just use their stories as a prop for their agenda, but don't actually care about the victims. Like she literally posted a video of a child being abused to try and work towards her agenda to build up donations trafficking hub access cried these companies groups religious organizations whatever you want to call them they get millions of dollars in donations every year zero of that gets back into the community zero is used in, for community services or outreach or actually helping victims it stays within their church and the company but they're all about the money and they use the victims as props and they explicitly state on their own pages and profiles, Layla Mikowet has basically like an influencer style Instagram, that their primary goal is to try and eradicate all sex work and all porn from the internet. And the scary thing is they're winning. <laughs> like it's working. People are listening to them. They are supporting them. They are sending those donations. They are signing the petitions. The Melissa McCarthy organization gave them a huge donation. And then when they found out their religious roots and how they were connected to the anti-abortion, anti-gay rights, anti-LGBTQI, all that kind of groups, they withdrew their donation. And then Exodus Cry kind of spun that about how they were bad and evil and terrible people because that's what they do. Anyone who does something they don't like is spun as being this horrible cartoonish villain of a bad guy because they can do no wrong. You disagree with them, you just get blocked. So people can't see any, you know, dissent on any of their pages and feeds. And I guess they genuinely think they're doing the right thing, but they don't care about who they hurt in the process or how many people they have to step on as long as, you know, they're working towards their goals. Because I guess that's what Jesus would do, you know? It's not like Jesus was friends with a sex worker, you know, Mary Magdalene and all that. And it was totally all about, you know, prosperity and getting as much money as you can to enrich yourself while basically being a jerk to everybody else around you. And... <sighs> but yeah, they have found success by essentially hassling 
I'm just going to do about hassling. They encourage everyone to spam and petition and email and phone the banks to drop services to all adult content creation, adult sites, adult pages, everything. And in this world of financial monopolies, if you don't have MasterCard and Visa on your side, you're kind of restricted. There are a couple of like high risk friendly because you know adult services all consider high risk banking processes but they're usually very very expensive and there's a bunch of other hurdles in the way so their methods are working by attacking the financial backing i guess of these sites it's gonna work because sex work they paid attention to the work part they realized people wanted to get paid and if you can't get paid people aren't going to be as likely to create the content and yeah it's working and I mean like are you going to want to make it sound like you are supporting trafficking or supporting abuse especially child abuse it's very difficult to try and speak out against it especially on an emotional level because then it can be easily made to sound like you support the bad guys that you are pro trafficking and pro child sexual abuse control despite the fact that you know there is no proof and no evidence of that happening on OnlyFans. OnlyFans had very, very strict verification processes. Not only did you need photo ID, but you also have to have your own bank account within the name suiting that of the photo ID and proof of address through a bill or something. So like they put, they had a fairly strict process for verification. They weren't children on there. If they were, it would have been a very, very, very small minority compared to the amount of minors who are selling feet pictures and fandom and stuff on like Snapchat and Discord and Reddit, which does not have any verification. I mean, even with the claims of the trafficking and child abuse on Pornhub, Pornhub in the last three years, they had recorded and also removed, might I add, 118 instances of abuse material, whereas Facebook, the primary offender, what did they have? Did I include a little note somewhere? I hope I did. I, I can't find the exact figure now, but I'm going to hopefully include that as a picture. But Facebook had millions of reports in three years. Pornhub had only 118. So if you're really going to, you know, think that it's motivated by caring about victims then why aren't they going after facebook or twitter actually or reddit or whatsapp or discord or these many many places where a lot more abusive material is actually being circulated rather than the sites where one it's easy for them to be found and you know prosecuted especially things like OnlyFans, which is super strong on its verification. Now Pornhub has two, they changed everything. Now only verified models can upload content, which is a good thing late and what sex workers have wanted for years. But you know, it, it's a thing that happens. But you know, basically what Trafficking Hub and Exodus Cry believe is that the sexual liberation movement and basically sexuality in general is what causes human trafficking. They believe that porn itself directly is responsible for all of human trafficking because only sexual human trafficking counts. All the labor human trafficking, you know, the trafficking that makes up the bulk of human trafficking because not that many people get put into sexual trafficking. The vast majority is for like farm work and sweatshops and even hospitality and stuff like labor trafficking is the primary cause of trafficking. That is where the vast majority of victims end up. They don't care about any of that. They only care about sex trafficking and they only really care about sex trafficking because they believe that porn directly causes sex trafficking. You know, never mind the fact that it existed well before, you know, the internet was a thing and porn was a thing. Like that was just the thing humans, bad humans do to each other. And their goal is to abolish all porn off the internet. However, there are, that's not going to happen. Believe it or not, this isn't the first time. Most sex workers were very much prepared. I mean, here's the December 2020 after Pornhub post where called it within the year. I was right. Called it. I mean, it, it sucks and it's bad news, but called it. This happens all the time. We're kind of used to being kicked off platforms because it just, it's relentless. It, can't, it happens constantly. And sex workers are really resilient we're just gonna move on to a new platform i mean that cnn article claimed that you know only fans creators after building up the platform gonna lose access to their fans 
No, we're not. Because OnlyFans left all the marketing to us. There was no discover page. There was no real, like, insight advertisement or anything. Unless, of course, you're on OnlyFans TV, which was exactly just for, like, the not safe. It was just for safe for work accounts. You know, nothing sexy. That was for the magicians and the fitness influencers. So all the fans that we brought onto OnlyFans, we brought them there through our social media, through our other sites. So we're not losing access to them. When sex workers leave OnlyFans, we're going to take all our fans with us. They're just going to follow us to the next platform. And there are a ton of platforms. Fansly is, is exploding right now. Pocket Stars is a great alternative. They're made by sex workers for sex workers and they're starting to have both a crypto based option as well as the fiat currency option. There's AVN Stars. There's, I mean, I'm not a fan of them, but there's just for fans. I mean, I'm not going to go into that. Like, there are alternatives, a lot of alternatives. Reveal Me, Alua, like, we're not short on adult friendly subscription services, but. A thing we need to remember is that the MasterCard changes and Visa hasn't announced it officially, but they're most likely following. That's going to affect essentially everyone. It's going to affect the entire adult industry for this story. And so it's not going to be limited to OnlyFans. If any of the other sites also use MasterCard and Visa payment processes, like these rules are going to apply to them and we might be releasing a few more platforms. So if you are a sex worker, Please do not put all your eggs in one basket. Remember to diversify. We do not know how many sites are still going to be around after October, especially. We don't know if in like November or December they're going to realize that the new rules are too difficult and kick us off. So if you can, at this moment, go on to like a few different sites to increase the chances of having a site already set up if more end up shutting down like i don't want it to be fear mongering but this is the kind of stuff that happens constantly for many many years and it's better to be prepared than to be taken by surprise i mean a lot of us were completely prepared and we were anticipating this only fans announcement we expected it happened actually earlier in the year it happened way later than expected so it's not particularly stressful when you have prepared for it. I mean, I already have a Safe for Work OnlyFans account that's free to join. That's just for vlogs and stuff. Like, it's not as stressful if you are prepared and if you have contingency plans in place. So if you are stressed out, there isn't a lot you can do at the moment. Stress isn't a helpful emotion in that regard. So just, you know, move towards the other platforms. Do what you can do. Focus on what you can control and what you can take action on rather than feeling overwhelmed and stressed out by something that is beyond your control or your choice. Because, I mean, none of us chose this. It, it's still a crappy thing that happened. It's a crappy thing that happened, but it wasn't unexpected. Although that doesn't, you know, necessarily mean anything better. If you can, join many other sites and probably create a mailing list or a website so if you do lose things your biggest fans can still follow you mailing lists are actually kind of awesome for that why not.com is going to have like a whole uh, course essentially video or post about how to set up your own mailing list you can set up your mailing list with your own wordpress site like there are many options there don't rely on one site because this isn't the first time this has happened and this isn't going to be the last time that it's going to happen. The sad thing is that a lot of people joined OnlyFans last year as a response to COVID because people were stuck at home and they needed income. So a lot of people who are going to be really lost and stressed out now are people who are essentially new to the industry and to the field and they're not going to be pre prepared for this. They're not used to this. In which case, yeah, it's going to suck and it's going to be very stressful. But honestly, this has happened before. And we're like phoenixes. Fire burns us out and we just come from the embers and start anew. We will be in a brand new location. We will bring all our fans with us and we'll just build up another platform. Fingers crossed that that platform doesn't also kick us out. But yeah. Okay, this video is still way longer than I wanted it to be, but... If you stayed this long, thank you so much. I do want to cover more into the Exodus Cry, Morality and Media, Trafficking Hub, Mess and Chaos, and I want to cover more of the MasterCard changes, but I'm going to do that into a different video, so this is not that long. If you want to hear more about that, then pretty please subscribe. And until then, I hope you don't have a good day. Have a great day. Yes, I, I just watched Free Guy, and it was amazing. Bye. Thank you.
cute. Oh, and look, grumpy car. Because, you know, it was a crappy topic. Grumpy kitty.